Hey guys, good morning. My name is Mark. I'm the creative director from Vidi Vixi. Um, we're based in Mexico City. Um, I'm currently in New York, however, um, subletting an apartment here. Um, and I'm here today with Design Milk and DMTV Milkshake. Um, they've given me a, a select few questions. I have to say that I have looked over them a little bit, but I don't know which ones I'm pulling. So let's let's get started. Um, first question. Where are all the black designers? And I was hoping I wasn't gonna pick this question. Um, all the black designers, they're, they're on the way. They're next to me. They're behind me. They're in front of me. Like we, I don't know how to answer that. They are, um, we're on the way. Let's just keep it at that, okay? Next question. Within the context of your design practice, what or who is your North Star? Authenticity is my North Star. Um, authenticity is my North Star because that fuels my work. It, it, if I'm able to, if I'm able to communicate things in a way that's coming from my own true voice, then I'm happy about it. Um, and it's just something that comes very natural, to, natural to me. It's something that I pursue. It's something that I'm always very conscious of. Is is this coming from me or is this coming, is this influence from something else? I mean, I, I understand that we're all influenced, we're all inspired by a lot of things, um, but those inspirations also, also give me my authenticity. Um, so yeah, my North Star is definitely being able to give an honest, clear representation of my conceptual trajectory. Hmm. Nice question. My face is hot today, huh, oh, guys? I'm tired. Uh, next question. <laughs> Can you pick out the before and after of your design evolution before or after moving to Mexico City? Can you pick out the before and after of your design evolution? Yes, um, my design evolution before I moved to Mexico, I'm, a, I'm an extremo trained woodworker. Um, some of you guys might know if you've recently watched um, Ellen's Next Great Designer on M MTV Max. Um, my design language was woodwork. It's what I had access to, it's what I financially had access to, and that was had a direct influence on how I designed my products and how I sort of communicated my ideas because of these restrictions. Um, when I moved to Mexico City, things changed. I, you know, there were access to different processes that I didn't have access to in New York. Um, not just because, not just because of financial reasons, but also just because of, you know, the, the landscape and the, the location and the part of the world, you know, things, you know, access to materials are, were a lot different. So that was very fun for me. That was very, that was an eye opener for me. Um, I was able to create a voice, which I never was able to do. Like Mexico gave me the opportunity and the time and this sort of relaxation to really finally have my voice because this is not something that is easily attained in New York. I you know I think New York is a very beautiful place. I think it's very productive. I think it's great for creatives if you want to make a sale, but I think that's where it stops. I feel like New York is great for a sale. Big cities are great for a sale. Places like New York and LA and wherever, but it's not a good place to be creative. And I found that in Mexico and I didn't even know I was looking for it, but I did. I'm so happy for that. Next question. Um, what does it mean to take risks in your work? Can you, Point to series. Can you point to a series of the uh, decisions in a particular piece? 
Um, what does it mean to take more risks in your work? I don't necessarily know that I can point to a specific, specific particular piece, but I can point to a particular mindset, which is authenticity. Like, and I guess you could sort of connect the two together, authenticity and risk taking, um, because I feel like you have to be authentic. You have, you can't take a, you, there are no risks without truth. And there are no risks without authenticity and there's no risks without bravery, which is sort of linked all together with those things as well. So um, that's my form of risk taking. But at the same time, it's not a just it's not a risk. It's just something that comes naturally. And, you know, that was something I think my mother passed to me. She was a risk taker. She threw caution to the wind a lot. She trusts the universe. She trusted um she, you know, she had a lot of faith and I'm so happy that, you know, I've sort of been able to um, trust myself and trust the world around me with that also. So that's a lot of fun. Next question. You've said that coming in or you've said that coming to Mexico where you had everything's about Mexico, guys. What's good? You said that coming to Mexico, you where you had a fewer social where you had fewer social connections gave you the time and space to what was I saying to find your work. Oh, says, An inevitable consequence of making it your home is growing roots there. How have you managed to protect your creative space? spend time alone. That's what I do best. And I'm a loner. I'm, I love, it's my favorite thing to do is spend time alone. And, you know, some people, sometimes it gets the best of me, and, you know, when I actually do want to sort of be a little more social. I think I am social, but I, I do prefer to be alone. Um, and that's how I protect myself mentally. That's how I protect myself physically. <laughs> Believe it or not, you can read between the lines with that. Um, and it's how I protect, it's, it's a lot of, it's self, it's self, self health. And I'm really good at it. And I think some of my best creativity comes from spending time alone. And I travel alone. I love to travel alone. Um, I eat alone a lot. I'm, um, I really enjoy like Quarantine was an, an amazing experience for me and not, you know, obviously it wasn't, but for, for, for other reasons, um, I would do it again. But um, thanks guys, I've emptied my hat um, and that's it for now. Thank you.